Hi, my name is Joni. I'm a technician here at Dove Lewis, and today we're going to talk about how to give sub-Q fluids for home administration. So here I have uh, my lactated ringer solution, which is typically what we send home for sub-Q administration. Here I have a drip set. Um, they're pre individually prepackaged and sterile. I have some gauze for drying up afterwards and a needle for administration. So to put these pieces together, just need to get everything out of its packaging. So when you take the fluids out of the bag, you want to give it a visual inspection and a good squeeze to make sure that it's not leaking fluid from anywhere. It may be a little damp from the packaging, but there should not be a significant amount of fluid or a prominent leak coming from the bag. For the drip set, I'm going to open up the bag and untangle the line. So on our drip set, there are multiple types of clamps. Um, there is this dark blue clamp that is a sliding clamp. That is in the closed position. That is in the open position. And there is a roller clamp, which you roll with your thumb. And so that is in the closed position. And that is the open position. Um, this is the spike end that goes into our fluid bag. So on my administration set, I'm going to clamp it and then I'm going to pull my fluid bag off the edge of the table just so I can get access to this plug. Um, if you pull on this plug, that is what opens up an area where you can spike the bag. You don't want to touch that area. You want to keep it nice and clean. Um, when you go to spike, you pull off the end cap of this spike as well for the fluid set. That spike goes into this hole and you push pretty hard to get it in there and it should be nice and flush. So what I'm then going to do is hang my bag. So we hung the bag, but if you are at home, you can have uh, someone help you and hold it or you can hang it from a doorknob or a shower curtain or anything, at, just at a height above where um, you are giving your sub-Q fluids. Gravity will help the fluid administration. So now I'm going to unclamp the fluids and give a little squeeze to this chamber and you can see the fluid flowing through the line. I'm going to bleed out all of the air and out of this fluid line and clamp it off. That's just so we aren't giving any air sub Q, we just want to make sure that it's fluid. So I clamped off my line now that it's completely bled through and there is no more air. I'm now um, going to put my needle on. To do that, um, there is a little cap at the end of the drip set. You can give a nice twist and get that open. This part is, again, sterile. You don't want to touch it. Um, I'm going to do the same with my needle, and that gives me another sterile area. These two fit together, and then there is a twist to lock it into place. Now that my fluid administration set is set up, we're actually going to give the sub-Q fluids. Um, the best place for that is right here in between the shoulder blades. This area tends to have a lot of extra loose skin and can easily tolerate a lot of sub-Q fluids put in one location. Since this kitty's a little bit nervous, we're just going to use a towel to cover his head and make him a little bit more comfortable. Um, sometimes with some more anxious animals or at home, you can um, burrito wrap the uh, patient in a towel if it makes them more comfortable that way. But you just want to make sure you're still able to access this area in between the shoulder blades. So what I'm going to do is lift up the skin and it's going to make a nice tent here. And if you imagine my finger was the needle, I am going to go into that tent right in between my fingers so that I'm not poking myself and I'm going straight through the skin. So it's really easy to feel where you're going to go and visualize. Now what I'm going to do is take the cap off my needle and try and aim it bevel up. The little angle on the needle is going to face up. When I lift up his skin, I'm going to find that tent shape with my finger and then I'm going to poke in there with the needle. You should feel it just have a little bit of tension when you go through the skin and then it should feel easy after that and that's how you know you're in place. What I then do is unclamp the fluid line and you should be able to start seeing the fluids dripping in the chamber of the fluid line. It, if you see 
fluid dripping out around your needle or fluid dripping out around the skin. It can mean that you have poked completely through to the other side of the skin, which just means you need to reposition your needle. Um, sometimes you can also position your needle a little bit better in the skin so that the line flows a little bit easier. It's also acceptable to put pressure on the fluids. So that means you just give the bag a little bit of a squeeze and you can see that the fluid goes through faster. Some animals get anxious at this. It feels cold and they can feel their skin stretching out and they don't tolerate it as well. But this kitty is doing pretty well with the fluids going pretty fast. So with the bag free hanging, you can see that this 1,000 mil bag has markers down the side that divide 100 mils. So since this kitty is going to be getting 100 mils of fluid, we need this fluid line to get down to the 100. If you're holding the bag, it can change how it looks, but so you wanna make sure that it's hanging when you're looking. Um, if you are going to squeeze the bag, you do need to check periodically to make sure that you are not going past how much fluid the kitty is supposed to be getting. So it looks like I'm just about, about at 100 mils. So I'm going to again clamp off this line so that the fluid stops dripping. And you can see a fluid pocket has gone under the skin here. They kind of get a camel hump there that is where the fluids go. It's not painful and it'll just absorb as they need it. So what I'm going to do um, is put gauze over where the needle comes out and just put a tiny bit of pressure while I pull the needle out. So with the needle, you um, want to put the cap back on, not towards your hand, but against a table. We generally here leave the dirty needle on the bag of fluids so that we know each time we go to give fluids, we put a new needle on. And don't trust that the one there is clean for you. So now where I gave this sub -Q fluids, we have been holding a little bit of pressure with some gauze and you can see that she's no longer leaking fluid. If she were to leak fluid out of there, it could be a little blood tinged. That is completely normal. Um, but you just wanna make sure as much of it stays inside of her as possible. So that is how we administer sub-Q fluids in a cat.